Nerve Injuries Nerves originate from the spine. It provides sensation to the skin and it allows motor power and function to the muscles. When nerves are injured, many structures are affected. Medial winging of the scapula usually occurs due to long thoracic nerve injury. Axillary nerve injury can occur from dislocation of the shoulder joint. Anterior interosseous nerve injury can occur due to fractures and dislocations around the elbow. In this case, the patient would not be able to do the OK sign. This is the typical pinch attitude with anterior interosseous nerve injury. The patient cannot bend the IP of the thumb or the DIP of the index finger. Posterior interosseous nerve injury. The patient will have wrist extension but will not have finger extension. It can occur due to Montagia fractures and the patient cannot extend the fingers. In a normal radial nerve function, the patient will be able to extend the wrist and extend the fingers and the thumb. So when you have a radial nerve injury, which usually occurs due to fractures of the humerus, especially the distal third of the humeral shaft, the patient will have wrist drop and also the patient will be unable to extend the fingers and the thumb. Median nerve injury or compression. Compression of the median nerve usually occurs in carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient will have tingling, numbness, and pain of the area indicated by the diagram. It's usually the area of the thumb and the index finger. Multiple provocative tests are used to diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome, such as compression test, Tenel's test, Fallon test, in addition to the typical distribution of the area of the symptoms. Tenel's test is positive when you tap on the nerve and this will worsen tingling of the fingers, as you can see here in this diagram. Thinner atrophy could indicate a severe condition of carpal tunnel syndrome. When carpal tunnel syndrome is not improved by conservative treatment and the splinting, injection may be tried, and if injection is successful, it indicates surgery for carpal tunnel release will be successful. The surgery is performed by cutting through the transverse carpal ligament to release the compressed nerve. Skin incision is made, the transverse carpal ligament is opened, and the median nerve is released. Ulnar nerve injury, cubital tunnel syndrome, occurs due to compression of the ulnar nerve at the elbow. With ulnar nerve injury, the patient cannot cross the fingers or abduct the fingers. Framen test is usually positive. When pinching a piece of paper between the thumb and the index finger, the thumb IP joint will flex if the abductor pollicis muscle is weak due to the ulnar nerve injury. The adductor pollicis muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. There will be numbness and tingling on half of the ring finger and the entire little finger. Lower ulnar nerve injury, claw hand. 
Claw hand deformity is a symptom of the lower under nerve entrapment or injury. The injury is below the elbow and typically causes flexion and clawing of the fourth and fifth fingers. Under nerve injury cubital tunnel release. Cubital tunnel syndrome is usually treated by under nerve release around the elbow or less commonly with transposition of the nerve. Femoral nerve injury. The femoral nerve supplies the quadriceps muscle that extends the knee. Injury to that nerve will result in weak quadriceps muscle and the patient will be unable to extend the knee. The differential diagnosis will be quadriceps or patellar tendon tear. The sciatic nerve is divided into two branches, the common perineal and the posterior tibia nerve. Injury to the common perineal nerve will result in a foot drop. Posterior tibia nerve injury or compression usually occurs in tarsal tunnel syndrome. This will result in pain and numbness in the plantar aspect of the foot. Thank you for listening. I hope that video is helpful to you.